welcome back to Front Porch Catholic where we talk about the grit and glory of domestic life on our Ohio hobby farm. And tonight we are answering some questions that were posed to us by Homestead Evolution channel. You can find their link below. Um, it's a collaboration started by Copper Kettle Farm. So we thank the Homestead community for making us part of this collaboration. And we're just going to get right to it, answering these 10 questions on this cold night. We had preferred to be up in the barn loft doing this, but you have a great backdrop of our bookshelf. And I was wimpy. It was really him. He didn't want to go outside. Yeah. What can I do? Okay, first question. Why did you get into homesteading? I got into homesteading in a roundabout way, I guess, because I first wanted to garden, and then gardening turned into wanting to live not in the city town, and then that turned into owning 10 acres, and when you own 10 acres, you got to do something with it. So that turned into my wife wanting to get animals, and then animals came, <laughs> and the rest is homestead history. Boom. <clears throat> what are you adding to your homestead in 2020? Well, what do you want to add to your homestead in 2020, Erica? There are many things I want to add to the homestead. It's really a never-ending <clears throat> project, I, I think. In addition to, like, a pumpkin patch, I also want to add animals. Um, and you really got to talk me down from this because I wanted a pair of breeding pigs again. We had them once upon a time, and then we moved. and didn't work out to keep all the piglets because our place wasn't set up for that. So we had to, like, just eat our pigs. And that was a good ending to that story too. But I saw my pictures of piglets again and I got a little bit of the feels for those piglets. So I want to add pigs. I want to add some runner ducks, Indian runner ducks. They're all things that we've had before, but you know, when you move, you kind of have to downsize for a time and then reopen. And she wants to get a cow. I do, but I don't, I don't exactly know what I want that to seem like yet. I don't know what to look like. I want a mini cow and a half a gallon of milk a day, and I know it's possible. Erica loves animals. Joe loves to work to make my animal Sometimes dreams come true. Sometimes she takes more or less care of the animals that she loves. I just create opportunities for the children to learn how to work on the farm. <laughs> so that's what happens These there. These are great opportunities. <laughs> so that's what we're adding in 2020, or what we hope to add. I guess you'll see it unfold, so will we. What's the most difficult lesson you have learned homesteading? Most difficult lesson. The most difficult lesson is probably don't get too many animals. Yeah. And that was the most painful lesson. Okay. I mean, difficult, do you mean like it took the longest to learn? I didn't make <clears> the <throat> question. I don't know. So that's what I would say. Don't animals in winter? In winter? Winter? Yeah. I would say it's kind of the same thing. Like, don't get animals until you're ready to house them and feed them and, like, you know, corral them. Have adequate an adequate place for your animals before you get them. I think a lot of people like to jump into the animal. And then all of a sudden they have this big animal. So they like to get a miniature donkey before you actually have the housing built for the miniature donkey? If they were me, or they would get a miniature donkey while the husband is home Before building. you have housing built for the uh -huh. pigs? The housing was ready for the pigs. Okay. And it was for the ducks and for the chickens. It's just the mini donkey. That was an interesting situation. We had a lot of learning curves. I'll share with you some other time. But, uh, all right, four, favorite chore on the homestead? My favorite chore is yeah. probably cutting down trees, which we don't have any here that I get to cut down. So trees. I'm half hoping that a tree dies so I get to cut it down. <laughs> Our tree? I'm just kidding. There's big ones. I'll find somebody else's trees to cut down. My favorite chore is I actually really like mucking out barn stalls because I feel like I get a workout. And I'm around the animals that we house, so I like doing that. But I mean, like the vegetables, if you call it a chore, I like to eat the vegetables and prepare the vegetables that you grow. You grow a lot of things for us. I don't think eating is a chore. It's not a chore for me. Okay, so that wasn't a good answer. Oh well, number five. Favorite thing to grow? Mm, favorite thing to grow. I like to grow people. If it's not obvious, we have seven children, <laughs> and I feel like they're our most valuable, the valuable, most valuable thing we call uh, cultivate. The most valuable thing we cultivate here is the culture that we live in and the people that make that culture. We homeschool. I'm home a lot. We've got this homestead thing happening. So my favorite thing to grow are the little people. That will be our legacy. Are they always your favorite thing to grow? My favorite thing to grow is flowers. Yeah. Probably. They're beautiful. What kind? If you had to pick one flower. Zinnias. 
Really? Yeah. Why? Because they're so colorful? Yeah. They're a winner. Easy cutter. They try butterflies. Mm -hmm. What do you love the most about the Homestead community? I love that they forgive me for wearing the same shirt in multiple videos. Apparently I wear this shirt a lot. So <laughs> they understand that. I don't know if they understand or not. You got work clothes. I'm your assuming. work clothes. Yeah. I love... I really like learning from other people. I like to see what other people do, how they do it. I realize that a lot of homestead stuff happens in a particular context. And while you might read about how to raise a milk cow in one context, like what it looks like on your farm might be totally different. And because of YouTube, I can like see that. I can see a lot of different examples. I like that people share their mistakes and their successes and just kind of like what their farm looks like. It's easy to get used to a Martha Stewart kind of presentation of life on a farm, um, but it's really not that way. So I like I like real sharing. There's a lot more mud. Yeah. Martha Stewart never has mud. It's probably pretty mud. I don't actually know. I don't know what Martha Stewart has. But... She has many donkeys. Does she? She does. I don't remember their names, but I read about them in a magazine. <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite meal to make? You make food a lot. I like making spaghetti. I thought you were going to say chili. No, my favorite to make is spaghetti. Okay. I like making chili too. We had our first marital like dispute over our spaghetti on our honeymoon. Do you remember uh, that? How to drain the noodles? Mm-hmm. I don't remember what my approach was. I don't remember either what mine was, but I'm sure that I was correct in my approach. Inexperienced. I had experience. I had made many noodles before. Not in Florida. No. I had. Okay. What's your favorite holiday? That's number eight. What's your favorite holiday? This kind of like a collaboration went out just before Christmas. So I th it's still going on. So I think that's why that is a question in this. So what is your favorite holiday? Heard a lot of people answer Christmas. How about you? Yeah, Christmas is hard to beat. I like Easter a lot. Mostly because it's free of a lot of the commercial baggage that comes with Christmas. Like if we're speaking liturgically, we're practicing Catholics. Uh, you can probably tell that by our channel name. But the channel is called Front Porch Catholic. <laughs> so all the deep meaning that come with those holidays is very important to us and to me. But um, Easter, I feel like I can really celebrate that feast for what it is. My favorite holy day is All Saints Day. Ooh, that's a good one. Lots of feasting going on during All Saints Day. Uh, number nine is your sorry yes sorry our child. We had a child write these down for us while we were listening to the show, so it's kind of illegible in some places. Is your homestead where you want to settle, settle permanently? Is this where you're going to be forever, this place? I don't know. That's hard to say. I wouldn't say that it's not where I want to be forever, but uh, if something changes, I'd be open to moving to a mountaintop in West Virginia. <laughs> Any homesteads out there for sale in West Virginia you guys know about? <laughs> don't tell Joe. <laughs> He'll have us there in no time. I love this house. We moved here because of this house. Uh, the place we lived before had a beautiful property, but the house was not adequate for our large family. Um, but this home is just total it's historical, and I love that about it. It's stable and solid and full of character. It is imperfect, and I really like that. Um, the homestead itself, this was an originally the home on like a 100-plus acre site, which in Ohio, that's a pretty big farm. Um, for like raising all kinds of animals and, and doing it like they did in the 1800s when this house was built. We don't have that much property here. If we did, I would say yes, this is where we want to be because the home is perfect. Our location is near family. Our community here is really strong and we love that. Um, but if Joe wanted to move <coughs> to a mountaintop in West Virginia, I guess I would just... We don't just... have enough trees here. Enough I know. Trees. That is the downside. Since I like to cut them down. And you have a chainsaw yeah. and a sawmill. Hmm. We'll have to see if we can remedy that, but... I guess we just learned to detach and to be flexible, to follow God's call, to try to be faithful. So maybe he'll lead us to a different place. Who knows? Stay tuned. Number 10, who do you follow and learn from? Meaning particularly YouTube channels. Which channels do you follow? Well, we've always enjoyed watching Art and Bree. Mm -hmm. They're down there somewhere, North Carolina. I believe Virginia. so. Yeah, North Carolina. <clears throat> They're a family like us. They have five children. Um, I liked watching them. We found them because we were looking into pigs, and I just kind of Googled pigs. The particular breed we were looking for was American guinea hogs, and they had some, and I just, I liked learning 
from them. I liked seeing how they did it. I liked seeing their family involved in homesteading. They just seemed very normal to me, and I could relate a lot to them. They're Christian, so I really appreciated that they did not hide that in their um, presentation of their homestead. So, I, yeah, I value that a lot. So we also watched Justin Rhodes. A lot of people follow him. You probably know who he is. Uh, and then, yeah, those are our two main channels that we follow. Like, we tune in every night. <laughs> like, do they have a new video out yet? I don't know. <laughs> Erica watches a lot of TV. I, I do not watch a lot of TV. <laughs> I wish I watched more. I wish I read more. I feel like mm -hmm. January... We just have this massive bookshelf to impress people. This is only one of our two bookshelves. The other one's even more massive. Wow. Whoa! That was an earthquake. Not really. We do live on a fault line, so maybe that would be a reason to move off of this homestead onto another. Whenever an earthquake comes and takes the house down. So, anyway, well, thanks for listening to our 10 questions uh, for Catholic, sorry, 10 questions for homesteaders. Uh, thanks again to the channels that tagged us. We'll put them down in the show notes. And hopefully you guys can tune in next time and see what we got to say about who knows what. <laughs> <laughs>